speeding audio, speeding camera. Uh, you want to flip the screen around there so I can just make sure that it's, still, it's going when we're going here. Chris, can you, that's not going to help me. That one doesn't tell you if it's wrong. It's the, the actual uh, on camera. Yeah, an hour and a half. Um, okay, go for until we're dead. We'll take an hour and a half nap in the middle. And yeah. Get back, <laughs> get back into it. We'll do some hockey. Yeah. We'll watch a hockey game in dead silence. And, uh, yeah, maybe just do it so you can see it. This, this oh, is this is our New Year's Eve party. Yeah. yeah. A little champagne. What is that, Sam? That's our, uh, that's our, our energy drink. Oh, no way. Yeah. yeah. Our, our uh, I, I drove over was like doing a New Year's Eve thing. Really? Yeah. What was he doing for I New know, Year's I mean, he just had it. He was all dressed up. Not usually at Santa Claus. You got to start hanging Christmas. out with Rogan. Oh, yeah, yeah. He likes the inappropriate comedy because Ari Shafir <laughs> was uh, his stand-up, uh, what's it, when you go in before? Opener. Uh, opener. Yeah, opener, yeah. yeah. And then I, in 2013, me and Ari went to Canada to promote the movie. And then uh, he said, you know, Joe Rogan loves your movie. I said, the Fear Factor guy? Joe yeah. Rogan loves the inappropriate comedy? Yeah, he told me that. I said, in 2013. Did I mean, he, he mean wasn't. It? He did, no, yeah, he loved it. He showed it to him. And then he, I said, oh, uh, is, that a, he's a, is he like us uh, blowing up? He goes, he said, yeah, he's blowing up. He's got this thing. I'm like, at that time, he didn't, it wasn't the Joe Rogan. It was just a Fear Factor guy. We got to get you on Rogan, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, he loves the inappropriate comedy. Yeah. Man. So, yeah, maybe you come in with me. That's bring yeah bring me because in, you're because me and you <laughs> yeah 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 that would well, be the uh, fucking would, show bro we'll get in. <laughs> yeah yeah Vince and Sammy that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it'll, be, it'll be good yeah do you mind if I lower your chair there yeah yeah is that too oh, low for you no, that's fine. just so our heads are at the same level oh yeah you're a tall guy you can swing it now yeah. you're gonna think I'm short again no Vince well, how are you six four uh lying down yeah six inches no I'm just kidding yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no six four six feet four Jeez, yeah, that I was it, unexpected sometimes I wish I was black but you know. Mm-hmm. And we all, yeah. that's always but, moments uh, in time, fleeting, fleeting moments in time. Yeah, I mean, maybe in my next life I'll be a black guy. No, I'm just kidding. Pro probably. <laughs> I'm probably black. I think I'm, I'm, you know, we're all kind of black. You know, I love black people because they're independent-minded. Well, I'll be, I'm going to be reincarnated as a black person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, 100% sure. Then, then, you don't get, then you don't get canceled. I'm you totally, can say whatever you want. I, I want know, my, man. Where's my white women? I wish. I Where's my white women? And then you'd say, yeah, we don't want to cancel you. We'll, we'll give you more white women. Cancel proof. <laughs> I wouldn't want white women if I was a black guy, though. I'd want, the, I'd want to do it oh, the right. You'd want yeah. the black. You'd want to do it properly. Black people have a good energy, man. They do. They do. Uh, and I mean... It's they, they know they have a good energy. And Chris, I've can you always, call black people energy? Yeah. <laughs> no, Stephen but I've always, you know, the, the liberal whites are always saying, you, you, we're, they, they never got privilege. I'm, I've always been extra nice. Like if I saw you walking in the street, I'm like, yeah, whatever, how you doing? If I saw a black guy, even if I'm tired, I'm like, oh, what up, bro? Yo, homie, what up, brother? Mm -hmm. like, they don't actually like that. So then I realized, oh, I just be myself. I don't bother it, you know? Yeah. Right, you know, you know what I'm saying. You must have. Quit. Well, I do the opposite. I do the yo, what's up? What's up? I bet they love me though. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you do it as a, a comedy, but I remember but they're like, obsessed with me. A long time ago, I used to, when I was young, I was like, oh, because I used to feel bad. I used to watch Roots. I used to, you feel bad for black people. What happened to them? You know. But yeah. then again, they don't want that. They want you to be yourself. So you overcorrected though a little while. That's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's super funny is in the underground comedy movie. Do you remember the Watts Watts up? Yeah. Do you remember city, that? No. The city of They're, Watts. It's when wow. the, when he's he's in blackface as a gang member interviewing a KKK <laughs> member. Okay. And it's the it's uh, <laughs> you're not gonna find it on YouTube because I already looked. But we'll have to have Trevin or someone cut this in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. But he go he's dressed as a black gang, gang member and there's a KKK member in the chair and he goes, "What the fuck do you think you're doing coming on this show? What is, is that what you said?" Something? Yeah, I said, I said, yeah, I, thanks for being on the show and I have one question for you. What the fuck are you? You know, man, boom. What the fuck do you think you're doing coming on my show? And then just <laughs> and then just shoots him in the head. And that bit was contrived. That was the, that was the way you wrote that bit. Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a funny it. bit. It is yes. funny. And then I thought, oh, with the woke stuff, I'm like, well, what's wrong with me? It's like it's like an honor to someone to pretend it to be me or so. You know, black mm. people loved it. Especially if I was shooting a KKK member, what? How is that racist? Mm. Like kill so, then, so then I thought, oh, when I do the, when I introduce the podcast uh, for the you know the Shame My Guy Show podcast, I said, oh, I'll just say, hey, uh, I helped in the commercials, but you know I was canceled because of some of the material in the movie, like me shooting a black uh, a KKK member. And anyway, that that that, that helped. Uh, did you get heat? From, did you get negative heat from that? Did people try to cancel? I mean, it was just that? basically generally not. It's not just because of that. It was you know that you know. You know, elite elite uh, review movie critics and uh, Hollywood. They, you know, they love fashion. They they love the gay community. You know, I had Dirty Harry. He was a gay cop. You know, make me gay. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> Flirty Harry. We had uh, 
Miss America Bag Lady Pad. So we're ma- we're making fun of marginalized people, but we're doing it with fun, and also we're making it uh, like our, you know, like inappropriate comedy with Ari Shapir. He's a racist making fun of different marginalized people. So he's making we're making fun of everybody, but we're also making fun of stereotypes where people don't, you know, the liberals don't get it because they don't take it. Like I think you would t- you were had to explain what you were doing. You always have to explain. Oh, it's a joke, guys. You know, I'm 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 pretending to be. A t- we're making fun of myself. As a character, so yeah, the, the liberals don't get that um, yeah, you, you can pretend you, to, to be mean that you're not really mean. You're making fun of the guy who's mean. So yeah, they don't get it. Well, sometimes you just be, you know you got just got to be mean. Yeah, sometimes you got to be mean yeah. for the for the and and but you know what though, man? Yeah, do you remember you did once you did one in it's comedy the, in the underground comedy movie? Yeah, it was Michael Clark Duncan. Can you pull up a picture of Michael Clark Duncan? Yeah. I can send you guys the clip here. as a as a gay guy, and the joke was. That it's like this, it's like a big buff black gay guy who's a virgin. Yeah. And, he's, and he's being flirted. The guy, there's a guy hitting yeah. on him. It's like a little guy's hitting on him. Fuck. Is it on, can we, is this on YouTube? It's I can so, send it to you. It's so fucking tapped. And you you replayed it three times in the movie. Yeah. You I, came back he to He was the, so good at it. You can, bro. You pay, I can you send you the same the clip scenes. in the movie. Show three. this, show this. Oh, dude. you have it. Okay. This is. <laughs> a big black ball. Gay virgin. You have a lighter, Nick. Yeah. What do you say we go back to my place and we can bang some real balls? Man, fuck you. <laughs> I'm a virgin, okay? You're a virgin? That pole's been fucked so many times, honey, I could see China. You know, the last motherfucker told me that before I put his ass six feet under, so I don't think you want to fuck with me right now. Okay? Six feet? Take me right now. Fuck you, man. You ain't got no motherfucking money. Get the fuck out of my damn house. <laughs> oh, Butch, I love that. Oh, my God. Right here. Right now? I'll tell you one thing. I'm pre looped for your convenience. I'm fucking saving myself. Honey, here's the bank. Oh, right, man. There's no such thing. <laughs> Let's face it. That's so funny. No, that, you ran it three times? Well, so, well, so they were ad libbing. So I, my, my thing was like, you know, you know, you do skits. So sometimes you let them just ad lib. It comes out better. You don't want to sure, say anything. Yeah. So I mean, my my whole my there was a things you'll never see a, a big you know a gay virgin. So mm-hmm. they just took it. That was one, and they, they just took it and ran with it. And he's a comedian, Ant, and Michael. That's was, Ant. That's Ant. Yeah. Holy. I shit. I knew. I knew it. It was oh, Ant. Yeah. Holy shit. So he wow. just ad libbed, and then he ad libbed. I'm like, well, let's put it three times in the movie. It was yeah, so funny. Yeah. I, no, can, I can get you another clip. We do, we do the same thing where we'll replay the same thing three times. But the, this was so, it's like so uncomfortable to watch because it's a it's just a guy flirting with a with Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's uncomfortable to watch, bro. <laughs> Who's a fucking monster compared yeah. to Ant, Ant the comedian? Yeah, I can't man. believe that's yeah. Ant the comedian. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's got a good sense of humor. Yeah. And you know, unfortunately, a lot of the you know the gays have a hard time in the '80s, so so they're very sensitive, and that's that. I think that was a problem too for underground comedy in terms of the movie critics and stuff. A lot of them are gay. Mm-hmm. And uh, they just, you know, they they wanted, they kind of, to be honest, they kind of well, lied about the movie. They said it wasn't it's the worst movie ever made. Give me a fucking break. Probably the critics want to get butt fucked by Michael Clark, Clark Duncan <laughs> too. Yeah. So <laughs> that's when I realized people just lie. How do you how do you just lie in the news? And I guess now it's just like everywhere. That's yeah, the way to do sure. it. I don't think you can be in the news. I didn't think you do that. Good. I, I mean, I was young and naive. Again, you know, I was, I'll tell you later. I was in a cult, but. I mean, I, just, I was naive. Like, how, how do you lie and say it's not funny and it's the worst movie ever made? I mean, oh, and then you know, as I get older, I'm like, oh, because it pushed your buttons, okay. But you well, just lie like that? Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's you dig into too. the whole thing. Let's First off, oh. let's start with getting your socials up here. So can we go to Vince Offer on Instagram? And uh, yeah. please follow this guy. This is <laughs> Thank this you. is this is the uh, the OG. There used to be a lot of um, impersonators being me. I I thought I, I thought it was a bad thing. Like are people gonna look at me, follow me around. I might get killed. I don't well, know. We'll get you some followers now. So this is oh, Vince Offer. You. Let's go on Twitter. Here's What's the your podcast thing I did? Vince. What's your Twitter? Real Vince Offer. Real Vince Offer. Yeah, on Twitter. I just started that. Huh. I uh, that one's hard. You have to co- constantly come up with uh, like every two hours. Thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah thoughts. that's nuts. Right. Just, just pay someone to do it for you. Just pay Chris to do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she's good. Yeah, she's good. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's Chris, like, I love him. Just, Chris, we got to talk about your pay. What do you get paid again? Oh, uh, yeah, he's, yeah. he's the hardest worker. I just got. I just got to. Uh, got to raise. I got to raise. I'm making seventeen hundred a month. <laughs> we were, oh, I can't afford. It. I can't afford that. I got to sell more sham. Wait, <laughs> yeah. no, I'll start selling them at the swap meet in Rhode Island. So real Vince offer, and then uh, anything else? YouTube. You want to plug YouTube? Oh yeah. Uh, the, the, the at the sham guy. 
And Trevin, yeah. can you get the links? Thank you on so much. The, put the links on the bottom for like five minutes here and just get people in the, oh, involved that's, here. That's yeah. really nice. The the sham wow guy. The sham wow guy. And on then YouTube. um. I thought, yeah. The, anything, I, I anything you want. Just show. Keep them coming. Our guy's going to put the See, link. We on have the 185,000 followers, but that, I don't think I uh, captured them correctly because they didn't get notified. Um, they're all so, Indian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got Indian followers. Yeah, they're, Mid they're Middle Eastern or, Indians or kind of short people. Or I don't know. Maybe <laughs> yeah, they can't all, see the YouTube. They're all they short can't people. See the <laughs> they can't see the computer. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are so funny. It's the modern day hilarity. This clip is from the full podcast. The full podcast is much, much better because we don't blast your eardrums with subliminal sissy hypnotone. If you don't subscribe, they are going to chill my family. <laughs> they, yeah, they're on, they can't see the fucking hey computer. Guys, stick around later because we have Christmas presents for Sam. Whoa! And the team, Nick, and Whoa. even we'll give maybe we'll give something for Chris. Incredible, give him a sticky. Uh, Does he oh, have yeah. a cat? Because we have the sticky. Is it. it is a is that that is that the lint roller? Chris has yeah. problems that he'll need a sticky for. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think we yeah, all those do. kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. If you have a cat or like a, it's, it's like a shedding pussy thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> As long as you say, as long as you say cat first, you can say shedding pussy. Well, we're about to get pussy for Chris today. We're doing, yeah. we're doing. Oh a, wow! Yeah. If you want to hang around, we're doing a dating show with Chris later. You're welcome no to join way. us. For wow. No, no pressure. I don't no, want to like smoke time. shows for Chris. I was just uh, talking. You know, this guy. Uh, do you know uh, a guy named Chad from uh, Cold Ones? Oh yeah. Yeah, he said. Uh, I told him I'm coming here. He said, Oh yeah, yeah. I, I know he did a dating thing too. Mm -hmm. He said uh, maybe he wants to work with you then. Well, right. you we'll should. Talk. You should get on this guy's show. You yeah, get some, that's you get yeah, some yeah. Crazy views from that. He's got mad. Uh, he's got like. Fucking, yeah, he's a really nice guy. He wants to do because he does uh, a products. billion followers. Does pro Yeah. He does products. He does products and he 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 buys them from China and then he tests them out and he wants to oh do a skit God. with my products on a recurring role. Does he do? Maybe his, we'll do one together. Does he do products as content or is he selling them? Uh. He does it for content. Okay. Yeah. And he's he's gonna he's like a consumer reports. You should get him into yeah. selling them. Take a take a cut from that. Sham really Wow Guy Show. And if hey, you get it's Vince Offer. I hope that's the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote Lou says TV commercial. You did. Sure did. Sham Wow Guy Show. Ideas, innovation always makes things better. They're gonna make life easier and people will love each other again. I'm <laughs> saving the world. <laughs> All right, Slack Wow, let's go. Uh, yeah, we'll go to jail. See, they don't want us to. Th we're gonna be China soon. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then, uh, yeah, then the, that actually has the What's Up talk show uh, where I shoot the KKK member here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's I, got I, it's got the ske the sketch in it. Yeah, it let's was. watch that, Chris. Yeah, and you said it was a new trailer. Yeah, right the there. New Jesus, we <laughs> just... yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, it's Vince Offer. So then, help revolutionize how you watched TV uh, commercials. So a little heavier there. I lost twenty pounds. You're gonna love mm -hmm. my nuts. Watch this. Problem with that shedding pussy? Pick up cat hairs from clothes. Now you I'm go. gonna do the same thing for the podcast the industry. For him, with for my new pussy. show called the Sham Wild Guy Show. And the first thing I'm gonna talk about is how I was canceled before cancel culture was a thing. The Hollywood elites banned my movie, probably because they played in Italian guys selling a meat sauce we eliminate the beef in the sauce for fetuses provisions from the hospital will guarantee us uh, mutilated fetuses the elites didn't like that kosher restaurant or maybe i was banned for the other scene where i played a black guy jj cool j jjk cool what's up fuck was that the guy from shamwell how Theo. long are you to oh. be on the show motherfucker? <laughs> Yeah, I killed the KKK. It's members. just the so yelling that's right? funny. I mean, even black How dumb black yeah. are you to be on this America? show, motherfucker? <laughs> even me. It's like, uh, I, got the, I got the N word pass. Don't you can pa America. pause that. I got the N word pass, guys. Yeah, let's I, go. I mean, I, I might let you guys use it. Let's no. go on the street and test it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See how fast it can go. Of course, I would, you know. One of my favorite jokes. Have you seen Kentucky Fried Movie? No. We watched it a long time ago, I think. Well, that's there's, what, that's there's what like a nerdy guy pretending to be like Evil Knievel, and uh -huh. then he goes into an alley, and they're interviewing him. Are you going to do this dangerous thing? And then like, mm -hmm. we didn't know what he's going to do. And then he goes into an alley, and there's a bunch of black guys playing uh, craps, mm -hmm. and he goes the N word real loud, and he runs, and they're running after him. Mm -hmm. That was to me, to me. That was like the funniest joke because it's so taboo. Like a little white guy saying the N word to all these black guys. So, yeah. so, it's, like, I mean, it's like the beginning of Die Hard Three. Yeah, but well, now you can't even do that. I mean, when, yeah. when, oh, you mean in a movie? I but thought I meant... saw Mean Girls with my daughter, mm -hmm. and they had the, the N word. The chain, the Asian girls were saying the N word. On, you know, an Asian. Yo, that's the one. It's my favorite. Uh, my, I've my seen favorite clips of this. Joke. Oh. 
test of a man's courage is how he performs in the face of danger. Well, in the next half hour, you're going to meet a very unique breed of cat. Chris, can you text Caminos kind of and tell him to come through if he can get here? Word fear. Rex Kramer, part-time airline mechanic, full-time daredevil. A man That's willing him. to risk his life for the sake of adventure. He has to chase it, confront it, and whip it. Rex Kramer, danger seeker. It's like the to me that was like the funniest because it's so taboo. You like you couldn't you know <laughs> you know what's funny? Black people love this kind of stuff. They love that edgy humor. You know, we in Ari Shafir when he when he uh, in inappropriate comedy we had um, him bringing uh, telling people to go back to Africa. Black people, mm -hmm. we were sorry we brought you here. We're gonna bring you back, and there's like a boat with a hole in it mm -hmm. on a beach. Is uh, that the one Dante was the assistant? Yeah, Dante yeah, yeah. was the assistant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um. So we would be in the movie theaters and uh, all the white people would look at the black guys to see if they would laugh. And then as long as the black guy laughed, then they all laughed. Yeah, yeah. They laugh. So yeah. so my my uh, my wife, my my ex-wife, we're still friends. She, she laughs at anything. So I used to put her just in case sometimes because, you know, so honestly, black people sometimes like they know they have that control. Mm -hmm. So they're like, you know, be a little bit fronting, fronting a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll laugh. <laughs> so she used to, I used to put her right next to some black guys and she'd mm -hmm. laugh and then the black guys would just laugh. Mm. And then all the white guys didn't laugh. It's it's funny. Yep, yep. So um It's yeah. called social proof. Did you know that originated in the sixteen hundreds, I think? They would put people in the audience and, oh. pay, and pay them to laugh so that everybody else would laugh. Yeah, really? I'm very yeah. pair. It's like the origin of the laugh track. She was my girl. Yeah, <laughs> shit. Well, we had screenings for distributors, so so uh she didn't understand why she kept seeing this movie. Why are we seeing your movie every single time? Like, well, you know, I just have to sit here and I just got to work here. That's mm -hmm. why. That just helped uh, loosen everybody up, you mm -hmm. know, you know. So, uh, so your wife didn't anyway, know how show business works either, like mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. They just want, they just want the free, the nice stoves and the nice cars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then they, th they pretend like it all just shows up. Yeah. Well, she's half Filipino. So Filipinos have a very good sense of humor. Uh, and and she and she's part Italian. So just had a good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. She's good at uh, cards. That's probably why. We, yeah. Where's Damiel? Yeah, but he's, uh, he's he's gonna be at the the studio. He's not gonna be here. No, I, I can get him here if you want. You should just tell him to Uber over here. Okay. But anyway, the thing is, I have the N word pass because I shot a KKK member. Mm -hmm. I'm Jewish. If you shoot a if you shoot a Nazi, you could say the, the, the you know the K word. I don't give a fuck. You know, it's Kramer. Like, the point is, <laughs> <laughs> Kramer is good. Yeah, I mean, they should, they should, come on, you gotta forgive Kramer. I'm sure all the black. Yeah, the black I wrote comedians. that joke for him. Yeah, guys, he messed up. So what? What do you? What, what's you know? It's not. It's not even black people that are pissed off. They get it. He's just mad. He, he just didn't know how to handle the crowd. Whatever. Yo. And now, <laughs> black comedians, Chris Rock, uh, Chappelle. Come on, Cat Williams. Help Kramer out. You know, he's yeah. got one mistake. The whole, he's canceled for the whole time. This cancellation thing is 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 it's it's a it's from racism. Well, I hope you got your popcorn because you're gonna love this next part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's talk. Uh, do we just do your whole history? Well, should we get some presents out first? Yes. Yeah, sh yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Well, right. and what's funny is one. First of all, okay. Here's uh, the sham. I, I didn't know this one. I'll, I'll get you guys some more. Here's the, oh, man. the sham hoodie I was wearing. A sham hoodie. Whoa. I, yeah, one of his. Uh, your associate uh, bought one of these. Yep. Well, I, I would have got him for one. Yet. Uh, so anyway, so because it's Christmas and uh, it's I'm a product guy. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to I, I plug it. I'm, I don't even know if that's gonna sell. We have the sham from, hoodie from you underground comedy. You know Bobby Lee? Yeah, of course. I have his T-shirt. Bobby Lee's one of the you funniest try... people of all time. Yeah, here he, here he is, the the Asian uh, Bobby Lee. Oh wow, cool oh, man. Underground comedy. So I got one for you too. Oh hell yeah, dog. Savage. I got him here. Thank like you this. so much, Vince. Yeah, no problem. Well, I just I just created this. Oh, you got different designs? Yeah, I got him. God screaming. damn. Uh, he might he, he might not like that. I, I haven't asked him yet. I'm gonna wear no, it. But anyway, I, he he came and took the photos. So. Is he not gonna like? Is he, I don't know. Does he not like you? House. No, he likes me. Okay, he doesn't but like me. He doesn't. Does like he not like no, you? No, kidding. but when I wanted to, when I did inappropriate comedy, I just wanted to take the clips from underground and put it in. Uh, and he's like, "No, you can't. You got to pay me to uh, come on. I'm already on a budget." And, uh, and he, so he had a lawyer to ask me not to put the clips from underground because we did a uh, we did the porno review. Uh huh. Uh, we did porno review on underground comedy where we critique fake pornos. 
So we wanted to keep the sushi mama and, and put it in appropriate comedy. So he's like, no, no, you want, I want you to pay me. Cause he knew I paid, I had a lot of money back then. So I was paying a lot of people off. Mm -hmm. uh, Theo Vaughn, Ari Shapiro, and it was an inappropriate comedy. So when, so Bobby wanted to get paid too. Like, I'm just going to use the clips from underground. No, no, you got to pay me. So I think that was it. But now I'm, he's, He's not. He's gonna be fine with that. Should have paid him though. Yeah, he, he's got money now. He's all right. Yeah, he's. he's well, I was. So I was tight. I already. I spent a lot of my share of my money, and then here's the big one. This is a little. This could be a momentous uh, time in history because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a product guy. Um, so okay, so I I went to a, a, a gay party in 2015. Nice. My my wife met a nice gay guy, and I'm like, oh cool, nice. we have a gay friend. Wow, yeah, it's yeah. great, great. And then all of a sudden, and and we got a she went on Facebook, and they became friends. I'm like, great, this guy's cool. And you know, Trump got elected, and then he just like because she cheered the win. She said, oh, uh, you know, hopefully there'll be this will be a real change. Congratulations, Trump. And he just like just terminated her. I'm mm -hmm. like, whoa, that's weird. So I was thinking about that for years. Like, what is that? I've never seen anything happen. Like, like if you like New England Patriots, and I like the Jets, I'm not gonna like like not talk to you i'm terminate you with mm -hmm. it what is that like you hate someone because of a thought so i thought all okay, the that's, time yeah that's a thought so like it's not like hating you because of your skin color like racist hates you because of the color of your skin Absolutely. he hated you because of the color of my wife's thought and and i thought oh what so that's like a new form of racism it's called thoughtism mm -hmm. like the jokes you had uh, you got canceled whatever they supposedly an adult so he didn't like that joke so that's a thought you had it was a joke and they canceled you so i created well, this the thing. thoughts behind the joke that they didn't that they yeah didn't yeah like but, that. yeah the thoughts behind the joke but the thought created the joke right for sure so, so and if you don't like the joke yeah i don't like the joke but mm -hmm. not hate you so yeah. don't be a thoughtist don't be a thoughtist so don't mm. be a race like it's like being a racist but instead of you hating you because of the color of your skin mm -hmm. they hate you the color of your thought mm -hmm. so now you have a weapon when someone says hey when you say, um, hey, I don't want my daughter to be sexualized right now. She's eight years old. I don't want to know anything about sex. I don't want homosexuality, trans, whatever. And then, um, and then. Uh, Should sorry. be a shirt, no homo shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's, <laughs> that's part two. That's, <laughs> that's what comes next. Yeah, but the thing is, you never had a defense. So people in LA, we get that a lot. Well, you have to be on your eggshells. You can't, well, I don't want my daughter. Well, you're a homophobic. Mm -hmm. And now you have, an, you have a defense. You can say, no, you're a thoughtist so don't be a thoughtist buddy you know i'm just yes, saying you sir. have a weapon now yes sir so maybe through your podcast here today it's historical we're gonna get it, it started disseminated because you can use oh. that in the vocabulary mm -hmm. weaponized thought thought uh don't be a thoughtist thought thoughtist right because you guys mm -hmm. first of all you're a creative people you're gonna have different thoughts not everything is gonna be perfect let, let, let's face it the, the thoughts i have sometimes i can probably go to jail for it mm -hmm. We all do. We have like bad things. We are, it yeah. just comes up. Homos. From a, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Risk. Yeah. Women. Yeah. Exactly. And especially um, with liberals, they don't get. They just they just look at everything binary. They don't yeah. get the message. So do you think got, you can hold a woman underwater or and, and a dog? Head. Head. Same, yeah. On exactly. The train. So yeah. We, we need to free 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 our minds. Yes. So we got uh, stop thoughtism. And yes. We got don't be a thoughtist. Wow. You're extra large, right? Thought. Yeah. There we go. Or you're large or extra large? Uh, XO. Stop Indians in the head. Stop oh, here's an XL. Hold down. Yeah, stop thought of, and here's the uh, Chinese don't man. Be a thoughtist. We don't. Yeah. There we go. Uh, we yeah. So and then we have an extra one. Vince, Run thank, over. Thank you so much, Vince. Yeah, bro. This is beautiful. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for these uh, these gifts here, Vince. Yeah. Nice. yeah, yeah. Very nice of you. I just thought uh, <clears throat> I'm a pro. Let me see. This. Oh, and I got the sticky. Yeah, he's gonna need it. Chris is gonna want it. He's got a cat. Where the hell? Chris has all kinds of sticky problems. Yeah, he's got the. He's he always does. getting into some gunk. Yeah, it, some goo. Uh, Some hair on him. Where, that where kid in his gunk. Uh, oh hell yeah! Yeah, yeah. Mr. Sandwich. Yes. Mm. Chris right. coming in the clutch. You want to just you want to just eat out there and cut cameras and audio? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Let's just go eat no, the food. Yeah, let's go eat and not make a fucking. Uh, okay. The life or hell. The eating show. Should I cut or? Yeah, you can cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll eat. I thought it was. I thought it'd be kind of cool to eat. All right, and we're, we're, we're back, back in. Mm. We're back on. We're rolling. Back on. We're rolling. Without Mr. Hyde. That's a great name, actually, Sam Hyde. Yeah, you got a good name, Sam Hyde. Just, I, I, it's like a reference a little bit to Jekyll and Hyde, but it was Mort. <laughs> Your original name was. It's what, like, was Mort it, is he Rollins? related to Jekyll and Hyde? It was actually Mort Shlomi was my name. Yeah. <laughs> but I changed it for Anna. Yeah, Shlomi. Yeah, that's a hard name <clears throat> to yeah. grow up with in Brooklyn. Just give us the whole rundown. You were oh. you were born in, in Israel. Yeah, born in Israel. 
Oh, yeah, just start right away. How long, Action! How long were you um, there for? Since I was six. Five, six. Went to e England for a year. I had to be there for a year to get in. And then my mom's Russian. We didn't have, I didn't have any siblings. I grew up in Brooklyn. So I, di I didn't have, I didn't learn. It was hard to learn English because I was six. Brooklyn's not the best place to study, you know. Uh, you know, the school wasn't, you know, it was okay, but I didn't have any siblings. My mom spoke in broken, broken English. And then, so I, it was hard for me to put thoughts together, combine words and have a, a, a thought. So that's why I think I was very more visual. And uh, I think that's why I got into skits. And you write skits too. So I, I think when we write skits, I think we see things a little more deeper rooted as a, I mean, you're a comedian too, but I think. I'm more visual, definitely. Yeah. yeah. You're more visual, so I think you see. I think we see a little deeper into what's going on. Where I, I could be wrong, but uh, but I think regular comedians were just words. Maybe they don't, they don't get to the root, and that's why we were talking off stage about how maybe some of the comedians we lose them to the woke because they're not getting. Hey, because they don't want you to say make fun of them ever, and that's what's going on. And I think what happened to you with uh, Adult Swim. I didn't deep dive too much into it, but I think um, they went after you because of your comedy was pushing. The line you could you, they, they, there's always a line you can't cross and that's when you were too punk oh, rock yeah. you guys were too punk rock you crossed the line and that guy was probably a thoughtist i think the guy is tim or whatever i mean i literally did a little he's research. a big time thoughtist he is yeah so he, he really didn't like is. your thoughts and yep. i can tell by the interview when you got him on on the phone he's kind of like uh you know doing some red herring here yeah i know he's a friend of mine i was just trying to i, I can tell you know so it's smug. good that you got him smug so i think that's also going to be historical down the road you know people look at that and say oh look at that that was the real thoughtist and they got after you so the fact that you were canceled and i wasn't really fully canceled i was more shunned and then you know canceled in that what way. canceled you uh well before we let's, get let's there, keep yeah. going chronologically yeah, yeah, yeah chronologically yeah, yeah. yeah that's so right. you're you're a kid like and you're having a tough time putting these two languages so he gets the together. big bucks big bucks. yeah what? You're, you're a visual you're more of a visual guy you're having a tough time putting two languages together you're in brooklyn yeah yeah aged what six six and i didn't have any i think it's good to have siblings my mind was divorced I, I didn't have any siblings to you know to to bounce ideas off of so as a, uh, a is it child, just you and your mother? Me and my mom, and so I, you know, I when you, <clears throat> so I was I had a lot of deep thoughts, a lot of questions. You know, I, I look at things. You know, you, you kind of communicate to yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Thought, uh, thoughts are very important. I think thoughts are part and parcel of who we are. And I think you know when we all go to whatever place you believe in, or you know, we're all spiritual beings in a sense. So we we have to live without thoughts. So we want to have. One, that's why I think it's good to have a clean heart and and be flippant and not be hateful. Yeah. Do you remember what it is that you thought you spent a lot of time thinking about as a kid? Well, because I was a lot, I was very reserved, very shy when I was a kid. Probably because I'm not confident. Uh, I, I think, I think a lot of it was like you know, you know, the basic things like where where are you from, who am I, why am I here, all that stuff. And I think that's what led me later into uh, a cult uh, or a club. What do you want to call it? Yeah. Uh, I. I can't say the name because I don't want to. I don't want to get shot later. Of course, but, um, you know. I mean I won't next get shot. Year. I won't get shot. Yeah, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you know. Listen, every cult has good. You know, it's like bait. They always have good principles. They're not going to get you with like crappy stuff. They kind. They ex they offered you an explanation for why you're here. Is that what it was? Uh, yeah, well, at first it's self help. Uh -huh. they, every a lot of cults do this in general. They, they have self help. You're going to get better. You're going to communicate better. You're going to study better. You're going to. You know, I, and and it got to got to give it to to them. They. They did help me communicate better. They did help me look at some of my things, the sins. But I think they go to the extreme. But anyway, I got into that later. So yeah, so let's keep going. So yeah, when you're, chrono when you're chronologically, a kid, yeah. Is there anything you're? <clears throat> what are you watching? For is there a comedy? Are you watching comedy stuff when you're a kid and teenager? Yeah, I always watched. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, we saw. I didn't watch Kentucky Fried Movie till later, but I was watching. Uh, Abbott and Costello. I love that. The first thing I saw in England, we didn't have TVs in, uh, I was born in Israel, but I didn't have TVs. First thing I saw uh, in England was uh, Charlie Chaplin. I just, that was amazing. And mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, Abbott and Costello later, every week I'd watch that in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And I used to like, uh, it kind of reminds me, in hindsight, it kind of reminds me of me uh, when he, the guy does uh, Crazy Eddie. You ever see him? Yeah, Crazy Eddie. From the, the TV uh, commercials. Yeah, 90s, yeah, a long time ago. My prices are bananas. Let's pull that, yeah, pull that up, Chris. Yeah, you're probably too young for that, but uh, he, he reminds me of me. I don't know if he influenced me, but. Uh, I'm too I'm too young for this, but I, re I remember in the 90s people parodying, crazy, parodying this. So it, this, 
This guy is his yeah. influence has gone through through time, of course. Yeah, yeah. Everything in stereo equipment, get it all now during Crazy Eddie's greatest stereo sale ever. Crazy Eddie, his prices are insane. Yeah, so get those earmuffs off and listen to this. Crazy Eddie's Christmas blow up list is going on now with the lowest sale prices ever on receivers, speakers, turntables, compact displayers, stereo rack systems, anything and everything in audio equipment. Remember, we are not undersold, we will not be undersold, we cannot be undersold, and we mean it. You don't have to ski cross country. <laughs> To get the lowest sale prices on audio equipment because Crazy Eddie's Christmas audio blow-up list is going on now at a Crazy Eddie superstore near you. Crazy Eddie, his prices are... This, so this guy was... Uh, <clears throat> was, there, was there a person before him that did something similar or was he the originator? Because I know that young people nowadays watching this, they're not going to know who this... You know, they've probably never seen yeah, this, but this guy is in um, in the Toys movie, in RoboCop, every... every uh, Comedic sort of era has a has a parody or a spinoff oh, of yeah, this maybe. of this guy. I think mm. Dan Aykroyd did a, a thing where I don't know if you've seen a S, on SNL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he did that machine. I think he parodied him yep. a little bit. And I, I mean, actually, he, sometimes things influence you and you don't know why. Maybe I maybe he influenced me a little bit. It's uh, I mean, it's kind of um, somatic for that for that guy coming out. <clears throat> it's it's kind of um, yeah. That's one. This is, this is, let's let's watch this. Reminds Chris. me of the other guy. Witches, warlocks, conjurers, sorcerers, black magicians, white magicians. Are you having trouble mixing your potions in time for the winter solstice? Is your sorcery getting hung up because of the hours you spend mixing and blending your remedies? Then you need Ravko's amazing new witch's aid, the Super Batomatic 77. You never have to use mortar, pestle, or cauldron again. Super Batomatic cuts, chops, slices, dices, mixes, and blends herbs, <laughs> plants, twigs, sprigs, leaves, branches, claws, teeth, eyes, ears, skin, hair, blood, flies, insects, limbs, and organs of all kinds, toads, lizards, newts, mice, rats and bass faster than you can knife a goat. Take this 11th century remedy from the key of Alcazar. Potion to win love and shrink hives. Feather of a young hawk, belly of a fly, blood, bile of an ox, a lizard's lung. Say sarax, sarax, and your will is done. Seven threads of a hangman's garment, basil, wolfbane, and a shoot of wintermint. To this add the eye of a rat and mix in the body of one whole bat. Yes, mix in the body of one whole bat. Remember what a chore that used to be? Now it's fast and it's easy with Rockwell's Batamat. Here's how it works. Testimonial. Wow, that's great bat and a great potion too. I'm in love and my hives are cured. <laughs> With Batomatic, you can prepare as many bat-based potions as you like without pounding, grinding, or mixing by hand. Throw away that mortar, pestle, and cauldron. Get the Super Batomatic 77. It works like magic. It's, uh... I could see you doing that as a skit. We should do a skit with you, something like that with him. <laughs> with, with like a joke a skit with me right. and well, him. Well, we definitely got to do a sales-related sketch. Yeah. It's just interesting how the... the how uh, this type of pitching and comedy are, yeah. are tangential, and they have been for you know forty years or whatever, fifty years or whatever. Yeah. Can you turn my mic up a little bit? And Chad and Chad will promote us because he's, <clears throat> he'd, he'd love to get that. Nice. He's Crazy said, Eddie was a guy in my neighborhood. His phone number was seven six five four three two one. That's not a joke. And you would call him up and he'd ask you to fuck your mother. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, his, it was, that was his number. Our numbers are seven six five four three two one. And he'd be like, hey, what's going? On? Like, hey, is this Crazy Eddie? And we used to call him, pretend to be like, uh, you know, like a kid in our high school's mom. Like, hey, it's me, Kathy. I want you to touch my tits. You know, we're like eight years old. Uh -huh. And he'd be like, yeah, come on over. I'll touch your tits. <laughs> Get back to Eddie. And then he, Crazy Eddie was just a guy trying to fuck kids on the phone all the time. Was it 401? 401 765 What happens if you call it now? Yeah. Probably picks up. He's probably like, uh, hey, you want to come over and suck my dick? Uh, it doesn't matter how old you are. 765-4321. Yeah. That would be funny. If we used on. to call it all the time when we were kids. Like our first prank oh, call. Oh, man. Hey, it's me, Crazy Eddie. It'll sound like Ken Kniff. Probably some old lady. Yeah. Catholic. Stop, Stop calling here. What is this? I'm praying to God. I'm going to touch your pussy. <laughs> he used to be so probably, good. Probably not the same, though. Yeah, he's probably dead so, now. So yeah. wait, so you, you, you used to call him? Mm-hmm. And then he get, you, you have to pay him to say these things? Nah, he just pick up the phone. He'd be like a pervert. It was oh, just like it was like somehow some. Oh, you can't make fun of perverts anymore, guys. No, no, they're on the scale. No, he he was just normally trying to fuck our mouths as nine-year-old boys. It was just like first pubic. It must be Jeez. such a popular number. We should get that phone number. At least he's an honest pervert. 
Yeah. That's, a, that's a skit right there. Here's another skit for you. An honest pervert? The honest pervert. I really want to fuck your kids. <laughs> hey, we're LGTBQ. We got peas in here now. LGTBQ. We got perverts. Yeah. We're honest about it. No lies. We want to indoctrinate your children. We love children. All right, he, he must have known we were calling. Yeah, he must have heard. <laughs> yeah. Or he's dead. We still like... So Roberts? you're you're a kid. You're watching. Yeah. You're crazy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I think I think in the back of my mind. I mean, yeah, we can talk about that, how how I got more aggressive. I think later on, I don't want to jump too far, but I think when I was in the SWAT meets, I noticed that aggressive style was kind of like working. That works. So I, that even though it's they're joking around, I think people like that. I remember just I was just fascinated how, about how obviously it's scripted and he's acting. But uh, what do you like in high school? I was, uh, I wish I was uh, a more, I was shy. I, I was reserved. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because I didn't have any siblings. Did you have siblings? <clears throat> I didn't have siblings and I was oh. pretty reserved in high school. Also. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's why we come out now like, oh, I messed up. Like like hockey, right? I never played hockey. So now I want to play more hockey because I, I, I missed the chance. Yeah. So it's like you were reserved. I'm like, oh, so now, and now like my thoughts are coming in and I can kind of combine them better and I can kind of express myself more concisely i mean i'm not great i'm still i couldn't even remember this guy i worked with anyway so thanks for getting me some food by the way yeah. um chris uh <laughs> so yeah so i was reserved oh man i was i was in love with this girl for three years she sat right next to me too oh brother and i was such a what was she pussy. Like? i couldn't even ask her out uh she's just beautiful and i was just like in love with her for three years and mm -hmm. then even when her girlfriend said you guys are in love why why did you guys go out you guys it's just so still stupid and then like oh, man. I, did I she couldn't. like you back yeah she liked me back oh man and we would play with each other in the feet and then, i don't know just i needed someone like i need a bigger brother even though i'm older than you i need like someone like yeah. you guys just to like hey yeah. come on go and get her pussy i needed some alpha that's why i got please keep the alpha males in america please this guy's helping Keep them. I think all your fans are alpha. You got to be alpha male. You can't be like a pussy. All my fans are alpha males. Are, hey, you're alpha male. You're a beta male. <laughs> yeah. If you don't, they watch their penis. The, the elites, <laughs> the elites don't want you to be alpha male because they love what they're doing in China. Because China, if you go to China, everybody's like, oh, so sorry. You know, it, it's like there are no alpha males there because every no now and then questions. you'll get one. No yeah. one questions. Also, uh, uh, just to go back to the cult, the reason I was when I was in the cult, they didn't want me to be alpha male either. They didn't want to be uh, having a critical thought. If you had a critical thought. Oh, that's bad. Here, it's now conspiracy theory. That's that's the same thing as critical thought. I have a critical thought. This might not be true. So it's it's kind of like the same thing. So when I got out of the, the cult, I was, ah, oh, I can free free. I can have a critical thought now. When you used to have a critical thought in the cult, you said, you write, write down your sins. <clears throat> oh, okay. Sorry. I don't want to have a critical thought. John Travolta wants to see him. Yeah. yeah. Johnny, he's, he's, Johnny. He's, he's in that other cult, right? Yeah. Johnny yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. One of those cults. So, so. You're in high school. You don't. You're. You're not. You're not doing well in high school. Uh no. I. I was a high school dropout. You dropped out. It's yeah. what's junior year. Uh, when I got to L. A. You know, it was L. A. Was really nice. When, Did you drop out end of junior year? Uh, no, senior year. Senior year. You know what's were, funny? Were I think I dropped out the week out. I was supposed to get the, my my graduate. Uh, the nice. week I was supposed to get in, I joined the cult. I said I'd rather be in the cult. Oh fuck. Oh wow. But, they got you out of high so school. You're in, you, I was did, gonna get it. Okay, when, when, did, when did you go to LA? When did you go to LA? Uh, when I was seventeen. How'd and, you do that? Uh, well, my mom was already there, and then I was okay. hanging out with my dad, and I, he had no discipline. I used to just not even sleep, go out all night, and yep. then, so I went to my mom. She's the opposite. She's very strict. Uh, so then, yeah. So, so she, from Brooklyn, I went to LA. What and, would you, know, you do when you go out all night? Oh, we went to uh, a, a club in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, uh, and uh, I was just trying to chase girls, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and very hard with, with Italian girls, uh, mm -hmm. I, and you know, I, just they're, they're just tough, and they have strong brothers who want to kick your ass if you try anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Polly at the roller bad. roaster. Yeah, yeah. going roast beef. They're worse. they worse than Polly. Polly's more like a. Uh, the cheesy version of the Brooklyn guys. They're yeah. really tough back then. I don't, uh, so anyway, I couldn't. Uh, uh, yeah, I was I was striking out, but uh, so I had to go. I get out of state, but you know, but anyway, again, I, but that got me out. Uh, going out at night helped me get out of my uh, funk mm -hmm. of my shyness, and then when I got to LA, uh, I became a little bit more. Uh, I was a little. They, they, I, they, I had a Brooklyn accent. Mm -hmm. I had blonde hair, but I had a Brooklyn accent, so that people thought I was unique, and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just go with that, and so I kind of like. Um, I think I kind of. You know, went with it, and then uh, 
I got confident. People liked my style, I guess. Mm -hmm. but then I changed my name from my my name was my, my original name was Offer Shlomi. My mom gave me the name Mark in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't like Mark because it was too too much like Mark Cuban. Mark <laughs> Cuban, maybe. <laughs> yeah, now, now, now especially with Mark Cuban. Now I'm glad I didn't have Mark. Right. And then when I got here, I, I thought, oh, Vince is cool because I loved Vinny Barbarino. And, yeah, Vince uh, is cool, man. From that show. And yeah, I'm like, buddy. I didn't want to be Vinny because that's too Italian. I'm out of time. But yep. I thought Vince is cool. Vince. Okay, so yep. Vince. And then Shlomi, uh, to, it's hard. Uh, I'll just say yeah, offer. It's a tough one. Vince offer. And then, yeah. And I, my grandfather's real name, he 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 was from Syria. He's, he's a Jewish guy from Syria. Uh, and his name was Solomon. Mm -hmm. So he changed it to Shlomi to be more Jewish in Israel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I changed it to Vince Offer, but I see, you know, I still have Offer, Vince, Shlomi, and my license. When, when did you become Vince Offer? Well, that was, I think, uh, when I did the underground comedy movie. Um, I thought that would be more, like, easy to remember. Oh, so you didn't change until you were 30? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't do, yeah, until I got out of the cult in my mid-30s. Had a started. I didn't do anything bad till mid thirties. So let's let's go. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. So chronological. You, you went to you went to L A. Did you go to L A. just to be with your mom? All the fans for Sam Hyde. Yeah. Just to be just to be with your mom, or were you? Did you have L A. like dreams? Uh no. I mean, I, to to just to well, just to get out of Brooklyn. I didn't. You know, it was just. It was just uh, L A. dreams because you see all these movies from L A. Like, oh, can anybody be an actor? So I thought, oh, okay, that's cool. I, I'll be an actor, and of course. You know, who wouldn't want to just get some some money and uh, to be in a to, to act in a film? Yep. At the time, when I was seventeen, eighteen, I thought that uh, would help me get out of my uh, confidence level. Ironically, you know, later in life, it's better. <clears throat> you just got to do it on your own, not through some kind of system. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I you know I learned that later, but you know, yeah. So yeah, I thought it would be easy. It's when I started writing. Writing, uh, I met uh a life field lewis juliet lewis's brother mm -hmm. he started filming uh me in skits mm -hmm. and putting it on putting it on public access yep and i thought oh maybe i'll do that in la and then uh so and i put him in some uh skits um and i actually got Ju Ju juliet lewis and then i realized i had a little knack to writing because writing skits even though i wasn't good with words especially when you join a cult they had their own nomenclature their own words so it's like I already have messed up not having a lot of words from Brooklyn and not having a good education. When are, so when now I'm having even more words. I'm like I'm really messed up. Like what are, kind of words? When are you introduced to this cult? Um, when I was 17, 18, I was hanging out with the wrong group, guys who were doing drugs and mm -hmm. you know bad guys, and I'm like oh I'm, I'm going this way. You know I don't think I'm like that really, but oh okay I'm a bad guy. You know, but then I realized oh uh, I was walking down the street and they were like promoting. Some you know self help stuff and, the, and they, got, really they got you in the street. Yeah, they got I remember. You remember? Yeah, they used yeah. to chase us You around. know what's funny? They never. I, I I used to work next to them and 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 I go by them and I I see uh, some posters and I, I just never. Uh, I never. They never. They never. They never talk to me. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not. They don't look good. Yeah, you're not the right time, shape. I, Yeah, then I got fired from my my work and I was walking with my girlfriend and I think because I was with a cute girl, they got. They, they, hey, you want to come in? I'm like, yeah, I do. Like, yeah, I've been coming here a hundred times. You never. So anyway, they, they got me and and I uh, started to go and it really actually helped the beginning courses are helped. Got to admit that. And then, uh, but you know, later they. They keep you, uh, you know, they keep you a little bit in, in their manipulation. If you you go outside the box, they're like, you know, hey, you're going away. Don't cross that line. Well, let's, what's the intro like? How's the the intro is the self-help stuff. And what is this self-help stuff? There was some good communication skills that helped a lot. Actually, a lot. I have to admit, uh, again, I was hanging out with some bad guys. So, you know, when you do sometimes bad things, you kind of look down and you really can't communicate, you know. So we... They had some drills to communicate better and uh, some s study courses. The number one study thing that helped me a lot, and I think that this should be applied to everybody, uh, is it a don't go past a word. There was a word. If you don't understand a word, uh, don't go past it. Like, look it up. Mm -hmm. And then you'll understand the whole concept. So mm -hmm. that was a, a helpful thing. Hmm. Uh, that was a, just a, it's a, a basic thing. I'm in. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. there's a lot right. of good things. I Let's wasn't, go. I wasn't Chris, that you dumb. Get on the horn. I wasn't that dumb. It wasn't like joining. Uh, you know, now I think about it, maybe I should have joined the sex cult. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> next, 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 next lifetime. Next lifetime. Juliet Lewis was was a was a club member, right? Uh, yeah, she was. Uh, I think Fox. she was. She was in one of those, one of the similar to mine, or maybe one of my. I don't, I'm not even. Yeah, something like. Yeah, she was, and she uh, she was in my uh, a show I was 
She she I played the the first Dirty Harry skit was in a public access, and G was one of the girls who were I was protecting. Mm -hmm. uh, so she was. I can send you the clip if you guys want to see it. Is that uh, is it on YouTube? No, no, I, I have to send it to you. Yeah, send it, send it, it, it to public doing... That's when I was like 20, <clears throat> 21. For sure. I come out with a dress, you know. So you're in the intro of the cult and mm -hmm. you're doing public access sketches. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I think inadvertently, I was just, I just, I started really digging and I started, you know, you, you, you make mistakes as you do skits, right? What's the things first? Things work, things don't work. What's the first weird thing with the cult? Like, when did you realize that it's, or when did you, when did it start to feel a little funky? Well, when they wanted to know a sin that I did a long, long time ago, which I'm not going to bring up here, yeah. uh, but uh, I didn't want to say it. And they're like, oh, it's going to be pr fine, protected, protected. When I know it, we're, we're never going to, oh, yeah, sure. And then I, I told them the sin. And, and I thought this is, a, it's kind of like a, when you tell a Catholic priest your, your sin, mm -hmm. he doesn't write it down, but these guys wrote it down. And I, so I, and later when they used it, what? Well, I mean, this could be a movie because when I did the, in, in underground comedy, um, they didn't like the movie. And someone, someone, I had a business too. So I gave someone the business and he didn't give me the commission. And he just used that movie and sent clips of it to upper management. And uh, that got, uh, that got a, a lot of, um, it became a fiasco and uh Long story short, I would, they labeled me a criminal. Wow, this cup of gold striker coffee has me needing to see a man about a dog. This clip is from the full podcast. Now, I need you to subscribe. Go now to mde.tv. And, um... Oh, yeah, I don't know if we can get too so, far so into you, it. Uh, so you had you had a, a somewhat successful business at that point. That's not shit. This is before the infomercials. You're selling stuff. Yeah, I sold stuff on the malls. You're selling products yeah. at malls, and I got into it. I got into it. There was a group of Swedish uh, guys in L.A. They just came from uh, Sweden, and they had uh, they were selling chamois mm -hmm. in the in the swap meets, and a lot of I, I just. I uh, started going out a little bit to clubs and girls would like, oh, are you, you the uh, Dan Blome, which is, he was like this, uh, one of the Swedish models. Uh, 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 no, uh, well, maybe. <laughs> Cause it was so, you know, like, oh, am I, I going to fuck you later? <laughs> yeah. I am. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't have to. You're going to show me use my brain. Uh, yeah. I was not, I, I didn't have any game with women, mm -hmm. but so this helped me get game. Uh, again, I, I think bringing in LA and coming from New York helped me get a little, get a little game. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, yeah. So anyway, we, we became friends, the, me and the Swedish guys, and they were bringing product into LA, chamois and cheese graters. Cheese graters and chamois. That's what they were selling. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that grady, that grady I sell with the slap chops. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. over here. So yeah, so that's how I got in and I started selling for them and, and I was pretty good at it. I don't know why, maybe because I'm, I am had that, Bro that Brooklyn, maybe I had a little bit of Dan Aykroyd in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I just liked it and I was just enthusiastic about it. And then, uh, they put me in a place where they were only selling a hundred dollars a day mm -hmm. and they, I started selling four or 500 bucks a day. They couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then they put me in a better place and I got better. And then that's how I got, became really good at selling. So you linked up with these guys who are selling a, the chamois and the cheese grater. Right. They were bringing out, it in from Sweden. You're out in LA and you're doing, you're doing kind of a pushy Brooklyn aggressive. Is it aggressive? Is it at that point? Is it the same type of sales pitch you did on TV? Yeah, I mean, I I learned I mean, when I first started. I didn't go like right away. Hey, get over here! But I was like, "Hey guys, can I show you this?" And then people were like, "Yeah, it's okay." I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. right. How about if I like turn it up a little bit? Yeah. Hey, let, let me show you how this works. Yep. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, get over here. You don't have to buy nothing. Nobody else is. You know, just throw a joke in here. Nice. Or, or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, my husband wants to go. He's buying a power tool you don't need. Forget about him. You're the doing, you're the one cleaning the house. Come here. Let me show you the sham. I, at the time, it wasn't the sham. It was the grater. But anyway, so I knew I knew uh, that's when I threw like humor. It's almost like yep. stand up in a way because you're know, standing there with uh, it's only stand up with pitching, and so that's how I got really good at it. I didn't use it yet to the TV show until I got. Uh, man, yeah, you're I don't a fucking go... grandmaster. Right. You got. I was watching. The, I was watching the clips, man. Oh, oh the Shamal yeah. originals. It's, they're the so cheesier? fucking good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so fucking good, man. Yeah, oh, I yeah, loved yeah. infomercials. I'm a sucker for an infomercial. I, I gotta say, I mean, looking in hindsight, I, you know. Uh, you know, you, you, I mean, it's a small category infomercials, but I guess I, I am the. I think I'm the goat. 
you uh, are, uh, when, yeah. it, when it comes to infomercial yeah, game, if you look at Hollywood, I guess if they're, you look at other commercial they're guys, they're so fucking good, bro. Yeah, yeah. I might, they're, I might even beat some of the Hollywood guys. Yeah, man. I think so. I, I think, think if I, uh, I think like Rob Lowe though, Rob Lowe's thing is so you know, um, <laughs> what's Rob, Rob Lowe's, Lowe's thing? Ro uh, fucking it's, uh, a teenager. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's fucking uh, <laughs> videotaping sex. Uh, don't yeah. look, don't Google Rob Lowe, Chris. Get that shit out of Rob Lowe. You know who likes Rob Lowe is the son, Warren Michaels. Let's get let's get back on track. So you're yeah yeah. So now you're veering off into so now you're selling. The, the you're market. selling in malls. You're not on TV, and the cult they want a they want a piece of your business. And no, they, well, not yet. I mean, not yet. They, but they they, just, they want us to put money into uh, courses and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, it really it was helpful for sure. I mean, it helped me a lot in terms of like me get, making me more confident. Yep. There's no doubt about it. Um, and that's how uh, you know you don't you can't grow anything unless you have something good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I, I did all these. Uh, I, it, it, it's they didn't want my money until I it, until you made the movie. No, I the made case? the movie, and then what? Ha what had to? I made the movie, and I had this business where uh, I started selling my own product. I left the Swedish guys and they did my own product. I think they, they, they kind of got mad about that, but I didn't. I didn't like, go I, compete against them or anything. I just got, got. I did my own stuff, my own products. Yeah. Didn't you do a? Sh didn't you do a chamois and a cheese grater? Yeah, I, I I I added that as a bonus item, and I did the chamois. Yes, and then you got a Swedish guy for the third. <laughs> and then, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so but anyway, keep. keep, keep well, going. we had a fight. They they, they they made fun of me once. I had I was on a date. Oh, fuck like, those guys. Yeah. What what is it, Vince? Why don't you go get a different girl to date? Maybe I, maybe uh, was, were they dicks? I, they became dicks because I think. Because uh, I, I think I stopped working for them, so they might have mm. been they, they might have they might have been justified a little bit. Well, you're bigger than those I mean, guys. I, anyway, I mean, so fuck yeah, it. but <laughs> but it, it, most of them were nice guys. I think they got <laughs> jealous or whatever. But um, but anyway, yeah. So um, yeah, that's a really bad experience. I don't want to talk about that experience. I'll probably cry here. I don't want to cry to shame. I get crying on Sam Hyde show. Now now business picks up. You got your own. You make them. You made the movie. Yeah. So I made the, I made the movie, and then I wanted my commissions because I gave the the business over. Uh, so I was selling. So before I made the movie, I, I had kiosks. There was kiosks. You ever see those kiosks yeah. in the malls? Bef they started in 1990, the kiosks. No one was doing any demonstration products on kiosks. They were just more like, you know, fashion stuff, jewelry. So um, I, a friend of mine was selling the Thigh Master in the swap meet, and he sold out like hotcakes. I'm like, oh, dude, can I buy that? Can I buy that Thigh Master from you? Uh, he goes, no, no, I got exclusive to all the swap meets. I'm like, uh. Anyway, long story short, again, I he he gave me the malls. So I, I and I, I said, how am I going to get into a mall? I can't afford a store. So I contact the mall. I said, what can what, can you help me out for Christmas? I want to sell these time masks. Oh, it's like twenty thousand for a store. Well, but we got these kiosks. It's only five thousand. Like, perfect. It's in the middle of the mall. Can can I put a demonstration product on it? Well, we never did that before. So the lady helped me create a nice demonstration, and then so we part, started putting demonstrations in the sh shopping carts in the malls, and I'm like. Oh, and, and then, wow, people just come right by. And, and, and I use some of my sales techniques I did in the swap meets. And one of the techniques I used to do is, I used to say, watch this. And then it's like a command, like, which I learned from the cult. Watch this, and I, pull, and I look down at what I'm going to do, like the potato, the pot and I look down, and then they immediately just come in, like, whoa. And then I, I know later on the uh, Israeli skin cream people, they use that a lot. Watch this, and they do this cream, same thing. Yeah. The but, Dead Sea. Yeah, dead, dead Sea. Dead sea. They, they, they do the same tactic. But uh, so that worked really good. And again, demonstration started happening because of, uh, I'm not saying I'm a revolutionary, revolutionizing the kiosk business, but in some ways it's funny how it, it then – I was like the first one to do demonstrations with Thigh Master, but then that that got saturated because the commercial just killed it. Mm -hmm. And then I, that's when I brought in some of the swap meet stuff that I've got done by the Swedish guys. I bought the slap chop, uh, well, the chamois, not the chamois. I didn't do the chamois. I did the slap chop. Now I, they never did the slap chop. It was called chop. I created chop chop. But the company that was selling the Grady had the choppers, so I bought the choppers. And that's when I get good at selling the choppers. And also when you're training other people, because you probably know that you train other, you have staff. When you train them, you get better yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons I think I got better. Uh, and, um, and then I also got better because I had to pay a lawyer later to fight. I was fighting the cult, so I had to pay a lawyer. I also got better because then, anyway, I'm going too far. Can you make a note, Chris, that we got to get some cult sales literature? <laughs> Just yes. tech, and whatever cult tech I'm already in. I already texted Maybe like a <laughs> lots of different cults because I can't really mention this particular We'll get different, different cults. They're all really but the same, you know. The so, I mean, they just bring you in with some good stuff. 
And the thing is, is when you, they control you and they don't let you have a, a critical thought. Uh, and I understand why they don't want you to have a critical thought, because then that's, you know, you're going against the powerful people. It's big no-no. And that's kind of what's happening in the world right now. So mm -hmm. that's why I thought maybe the thoughtist helps you get out of the, the when they hate you for having a, a critical mind or, or a conspiracy theory, or mm -hmm. they hate you because they don't want you to veer off into what... You might burn the capital down. Yeah. <laughs> so at this, so now you're exactly now you're selling. You're doing kiosk demonstrations. You're learning. You have staff that you're training. You're what are you in your mid twenties? Yeah, I'm in my mid twenties. Mm -hmm. I did really good, and I was able. to, I thought I'll take the public access material I did because uh, I know. Are you uh, making bank at this point? Are you making? Are you making? You yeah, yeah. Up? I'm making over a mil. Uh, I, let's see. I, I, I would say net maybe three four hundred thousand. Three hundred forty thousand a year. Uh, yeah, three hundred. In the mid nineties. Yeah, in the wow, mid. Wow, you must have been hanging out with like Tori Spelling if you could make no, that. You... No. <laughs> and so you're you're is it your dream to become a filmmaker? Well, because of the public access, mm -hmm. I I really enjoyed writing the skits. Um, I enjoyed people coming up coming up to me like Slash from Guns N' Roses called me on my phone. I was so like again I was so I didn't even pick up the phone. He was he was like uh, you know through the answering service. Uh, I heard him, mm -hmm. uh, and then Axel liked it. By the way, in the in the underground comedy movie, was Slash drunk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's he's uh, he, he yeah he specifically wanted to get drunk. He was extremely charismatic. He was like very funny. Yeah, yeah, he was. He, I, I, yeah, he just he knows. I mean, he's Slash. He knows. He he's just very confident. He's really he was great. He's so yeah. good at getting pussy. Yeah. I, start, I always <laughs> thought pussy makes you stupid. To be honest, I, I hate yeah. saying that. I know everybody no, that's loves pussy. Fair. I just you lose your edge, I think. I, yeah, you get cozy. I notice comedians. I don't want. I don't want to name comedians, but some key, comedians I knew from the past. I, I'm kind of veering off a little bit, but we can come back to. It. I notice that they're not because I know they're blowing up, and also the social media is making people. They be, they become instead of the courtchesters, they're becoming the monarchs. Yeah, yeah. they're becoming the kings themselves, and mm -hmm. I think it's a something. It, it, like they're forced now they're like forcing the comedy they're not like being more like relaxed because i know them before and i know them after and i know they get you know they're getting pussy through, through the instagram dms mm -hmm. and i'm mm -hmm. just being at the shows you know um i think if you abuse it i think i think the higher power the higher divine or god whatever you believe in, i don't think he wants you to abuse it just like you abuse anything mm -hmm. and i think that's uh affecting their comedy i almost want to communicate that to them i don't think they give a shit but, Talking about Amy Schumer, right? It's very easy. Yeah. To, very easy to lose your guys, edge. Yeah, very easy to lose yeah. the edge. Mm -hmm. And I think the guys who, I, I, I think you, they got to spot that. That's why I'm hoping uh, uh, talking to you about it. And uh, I mean, I know you guys. I, 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 I like this year. I stopped watching porn, and I'm just more myself. Hey, I hate to say it. Good job. Yeah. Well done, sir. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. I'm just it's hard when it's the hard gay right porn now. is so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These guys are just so charismatic. Yeah, guys, the they're just porn. so fun to watch. <laughs> We've all they're, watched porn. They're, real, they're true performers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just like, I didn't expect them to be such good kissers. Yeah. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but porn's definitely evil. That shit is horrifying. Yeah, yeah. and it, it just, to, I mean, I know this is not, we're not going for political here, but I mean, I don't even know if that's political, but I, I just think it, it, probably it, is. it is political. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the, the powerful people want you, young, dumb, and full of rum or whatever, they, they, they yeah. want you stupid. It because they want you to be fixated on it, so they're easy easy to control. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. you can vote the way they want, and then you can they can put their ideologies the way they want. So mm -hmm. again, that's a message. Because I was in the a cult, I was I'm able to see a little bit like a little deeper. And like you said, you write skits, you can see a little bit more to the root what's going on. You mm -hmm. know, th this this truth out there, and then there's there there's like the real truth. So you have to just go a little deeper, you know. It's like, um, for example, like um, George Floyd. Floyd, right? Yeah. You know, okay, all cops are racist. That's the truth, right? But what's the real truth? Maybe they're not all racist. Maybe <laughs> they're just abusing their power, just like everybody else is, right? You know, the government, FBI, NASA. Maybe that sh sh Chauvin guy just abuses power, and he's got the wrong inf wrong information, and that he got trained in, and he just abused his power. He probably had those people uh, videoing him, and he's like, oh, I don't, I don't. So I'm just saying, maybe they're not they're not racist. I don't think they're racist. I just think they abused their power, the cops, and I think they, they I know they did because they abused it on me once. But I don't think it's white or black. I think if you just if if you go against them, they'll abuse. So anyway, so if you look at that. I think that's the real truth versus like all cops are racist, <laughs> but really all, maybe all cops just abuse their power and they look like racist, but they're not. It, it's all depends how you narrate it.
So I, I think that's the best like, job in the world, depending well, on how much you like to yeah to drive abuse minorities. Okay, yeah, I like <laughs> to let's get drive so Ford Explorer. No, but so I, now, so but now, I'm just saying there's truth and there's real truth in, re in regular life. So and the truth, again, the porno thing I think is uh, again I, I really want comedians to like snap out of it too because I think it's they're coming for you. They're going to be coming for you. So I think. Uh, they just got to be like, I, I know you're having fun mm -hmm. you're, and it's great that you're meeting people and, and you're, you're successful and you're making money. And now you become a little bit monarchy with all the, the followers because I know mm -hmm. the Internet had, creates followers and I understand the value there. But if you abuse that, I think it it, 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 it hurts your career in, in comedy. I'm just and again, you got to listen to me because I'm a high school dropout. <laughs> I'm listening to that. Very, just, I'm, I think what I you're think saying is some, extremely yeah, true. Normal jobs I'm listening very years. intently yeah. to that because I think yeah. that rings. That is absolutely rings true, and and, uh, and I think that's important. Yeah, uh, I feel like that's important. Do you want to look at the camera? I'm just curious. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hurt my back. <laughs> Feeling invincible is uh, a problem. Yeah, especially with a. Uh, some of these, some of these entertainers in the world, right? Got to be ready to snap someone's neck in half. Okay, so, <laughs> so uh, I like it. it. Has Vince in it? <laughs> well, that's, that's the name I came up with. That's Invincible. the cleaner, the invincible cleaner. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got um. So now we're we're you're making a lot of money, and you're you've got this the public access stuff, and you're thinking now you want to put it into a film format. The people at the at the cult do not like this film. Well, it's not so much they didn't like it. It's just that um that uh, the guy who owed me the money kind of took clips out of it, put it in a report, and send it up, up to management. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know he did that. So for three years, I'm working, I'm work they, you know, I'm getting, the, uh, what is it, divert, there's like this big diversion of me, they're stringing me along for three years, mm -hmm. telling me I'm going to get justice, and they never did. I mean, I can't, I can't get too much into it, but uh, we signed, I signed with them like I'm not going to, well, I'm not mentioning the name anyway, but anyway, right. so for three guy, years I would like he strung me along, and then I and that's when I. But said, a guy, a guy who uh, owed you money, he he took things out of context to fuck with you. Yeah, let's say me and you are in a group in mm -hmm. a, a club, and then uh, you gave me a let's say uh, this other product business you're doing, and then I say, oh, you know what? Look, you know, he's he's talking about the gays, and he's talking about this, and he's uh, I got these hookers or. Got this. He's dating. He's trying to get herpes about, mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to one of his friends. You know, I'm just saying. I, I, yeah, and I take yeah, clips yeah. of that and I show up a management. Yep. It's like that's kind of what happened. And then and they sided with that. And the irony is, the leader of the cult wrote a uh, wrote books that had semen in it that had lots of stuff orgies in it. Mm -hmm. And I had to show them that. It, it took years to, you know. And they finally said okay, but then they never gave me the money. The, the guy never gave me the money. And ironically. A year later, because we all believe this in the club, that karma, we all believe in karma, we call it something else. The guy died a year later. Oh. I used to tell him that, dude, you got to, there was a word that we used, karma. You're going to get karma. You're, you're fucking me over. Mm -hmm. No, I don't care. You know, no, you're, you got a bad movie. Blah, blah, I don't want to pay you. Blah, blah. Yeah, fuck that guy. And then the guy died. Guy's fucking, believe it. guy's fucking dead now. Fell out of a plane. Fuck yeah. him. I mean, he's, he's probably, probably, you know, he's probably making some kind of reparations up there. He's probably in hell. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, well, so, I think I think you get hell in in, in your heart in mm -hmm. real life. I don't mm -hmm. think you have to go to hell. If you look at people who do bad things, I think they just have a heart that, um, you know, even the guy who screwed you over at Adult Swim, I think he, his heart is now he doesn't even know it because his just life sucks, mm -hmm. you know, and and you got you got an eternity to live with. So you want that's hell. If you're mm. going to have to live with that baggage, come on. Mm. You know, again, I'm veering off. Sorry, guys. No, it's right on. I yeah. like that. 